Hi for everyone uh, and uh, good evening. Uh, uh, now we are uh, discussing um, a very important topic, um, uh, chronic mystery ischemia. We have discussed um, about anatomy and epidemiology and anastomosis between uh, different mystery vessels in, in the previous lecture. The, picture, the uh, lecture today is about chronic mystery ischemia. <laughs> Um, the instance between female and the male, 3 to 1, median age is 65 years. Symptoms postprandial abdominal pain after half hour of the meal and last for 6 hours. Number 2 fear of eating cytophobia. Loss of weight and cachexia. Associated symptoms nausea, vomiting, changes in the bowel habit. What about the signs? Loss of weight, abdominal bruit, increase in the spinal sound. No guarding, tenderness, or about tenderness because it is not acute in the ischemia or we don't have peritonitis. Uh, what is the management? We have discussed about the investigation in the previous lecture and the anatomy in the previous lecture. Uh, now we are launching only about the clinical lecture and the management of the chronic mesothelioma and later on the guidelines. Endovascular management, the primary stent is treating the choice in more than 80% of patients with chronic mesothelioma ischemia. It is optimal for short focal stenosis or a small segment occlusion with minimal to moderate calcification or thrombus. Technical difficulty present with flush occlusion, long segment occlusion, severe eccentric calcification, and tandem lesion affect branches. Diagnostic 5 branch catheter overrun or 35 guide wire is done by transbrachial access or femoral access, which need Cobra 2 catheter or SOS catheter at level of T12. Celiac trunk and severe mystic artery is detected at lateral view, while the inferior mystic artery is detected at 15 degree right lateral oblique. Celiac trunk stent has risk of fracture and re with median arcuate ligament pressure. Primary stenting is usually preferred treatment in severe mystic artery due to high incidence of re and early elastic recoil with only uh, uh, angioplasty or uh, uh, balloon angioplasty. Uh, Balloon mounted stent is preferred for precise deployment using crossing guide wire O14, filter wire, extend the stent 1 to 2 mm, encroaching inside the aorta. The size of the stent is about 6 or 7 mm. Most recently, covered stent has a superior beta serrated compared with bare metal stent. This is the picture of crossing the lesion in the superior mesonic artery and it's a picture of a filter. And then a precise deployment of a balloon mounted bare metal stent, and we have to encroach 1 to 2 mm inside the earth. Embryo protection can be used usually selectively, it's not the routine, but selectively in case of long lesion about 30 mm length, severe calcification, thrombosum, or with acute or subacute symptoms. Predilection is recommended only if there is tight stenosis, inclusion, severe calcification, or two sides. In the recolorization of the occluded superior artery, a coexist support system using 7 French sheet, 7 French multipurpose gut catheter, and 5 French multipurpose catheter is used, crossing leisure by gut wire all 35, sometimes all 14 or 18, and is preferred to use filter. In the picture of recolorization in case of an occluded superior artery, and he have told us that then, we have them to make pushability and support, so we have them long sheets and 7 French. And then guide the catheter multi and then guide the catheter multi catheter, and you have them cross the region using the wire O14, O18, O35, and then precise development using a balloon mounted uh, bare metal stand, or sometimes in better cover stand, size 6 or 7 in supermusic artery, and um, it's allowable to be encouraged inside the aorta about 1 to 2 mm uh, during insertion or development of the stand. Take care uh, when you are passing the guide wire, you are passing in the main stem or the uh, main vessels of the superior artery, not them inside the branch. Being there's a risk of the perforation and later on hematoma formation, as we have found in this picture. Actual treatment during endovascular management, acute or subacute symptoms, you can use a tissue plasmation activator. In case of the eccentric calcification, you can use a terectomy device. What is the complication? Cardiac GI bleeding, bowel ischemia. Renal failure, distal improvisation, thrombosis, and dissection. Post operative follow up for endovascular management and assess abdominal pain in post operative state. Resume regular diet within 6 to 8 hours. Has been pre operative and the cruelty started at the day of the intervention. 
and extend it for six to eight weeks in for or for longer time. The second option for revascularization for the chronic mesenteric ischemia is open revascularization. It is indicated in surgical low risk patients with unfavorable anatomy for endovascular management. It also indicated in case of failed endovascular intervention in case of any stenosis. Supraceliac aorta is used as a source on the pillow in 80% in case of open mesenteric revascularization and C grade bypassing using bifurcated polyester graft. Retrograde bypass based on infrarenal aorta or common iliac artery as a source of the inflow. It is preferred in elderly, cardiac, cachexia, pulmonary, and renal dysfunction. Anti-grade mesenteric bypass it has potential hemodynamic preference and to avoid thinking. Incision is trans peritoneal midline or bilateral costal with exposure of the superior celiac aorta segment and celiac artery while exposure of the superior mesenteric artery at the root of mesentery. It allow evaluation of the intra abdominal organ and pathology. It allow careful inspection of small intestine. The exposure of the celiac trunk and the supra celiac aorta in um, lesser second in the hepatotelial uh, ligament and you will encounter about the uh, obsidicus uh, and then uh, you will find the cause of the fragment and later on the uh, ganglion surrounding the uh, celiac trunk. This is the exposure of the celiac trunk and the supraceliac uh, aorta, the inflow from the supraceliac aorta, and one for the celiac trunk and mm -hmm. another passing them through root of mesentery to targeting or hitting the target superior mesenteric artery. Retrograde mesenteric bypass it is common to reconstruct all the superior mesenteric artery, inflow infrarenal aorta or common iliac artery, 8 to 10 mm graft C shape in iliac artery inflow. Right, iliac artery is preferred if both suitable can pass through root of mesentery. This picture often C-shaped retrograde uh, synthetic PCEP graft between the right common iliac artery and superior mesenteric artery. Hyperprocedural retrograde open mesenteric skin uh, indicated in acute mesenteric ischemia due to in situ thrombosis with presence indication of laparotomy operation. It is indicated in severe aortic or iliac calcification and when there is no good source of the inflow for bypass. This is the picture after exposure and uh, uh, making a uh, vessel loop to control the superior artery, a bunch of uh, guide wire, sheet, and then uh, interruptive angiography, uh, passing the region using uh, the guide wire and uh, precise deployment using uh, the um, a bare metal uh, or more distant. Uh, another option is transcend aortic mesenteric end arterectomy, midline or thoracoabdomen incision, exposure of the aorta with medial visceral rotation, longitudinal or trapdoor arteriotomy, end arterectomy of the baron with visceral aorta, serious superior mesenteric and renal, complication pulmonary GI, cardiac and renal, prolonged area spawn infection and graft thrombosis. And this is the picture of uh, end arterectomy. Guidelines and take home messages. In patients with uh, suspected chronic mesenteric ischemia, uh, uh, ultrasound of mesenteric arteries is recommended at the first line examination. In patients with moderate to high suspicion of chronic mesenteric ischemia, CT angiography is recommended to map, to map the occlusive disease and to detect or exclude other intra abdominal pathology. MRA may be considered as alternative for CT angiography for diagnosis. In addition with symptomatic and chronic mesenteric ischemia caused by multi-vessel occlusive disease, revascularization is recommended. In addition with symptomatic single vessel disease, revascularization may be considered. In addition with advanced chronic mesenteric ischemia severe with loss of diarrhea, continuous pain it is not recommended that revascularization is delayed by attempt to improve the nutrition state. In addition that require revascularization for chronic mesenteric ischemia and the superior mesenteric artery at the main target vessel using either open or endovascular technique. In patients with endovascular treatment for chronic mesenteric ischemia, routine mesenteric stent should be used as opposed to then a prone angioplasty. In patients require mesenteric artery stent, cover stent as opposed to the permanent stent may be considered. In patients with chronic mesenteric ischemia, open revascularization should be considered in the following situation. In patients who has failed endovascular therapy, 
in patients who are not candidate for endovascular intervention because of extensive occlusion and calcification, including safety, safe angiopathy and stent. And in case of young patients with complex non atherosclerotic lesion caused by vasculitis or mid aortic syndrome. In patients needing mesenteric revascularization, prones should be considered when trans aortic stent and open reconstruction are impossible. And the last one, in patient after endovascular revascularization for chronic mesenteric ischemia, dual antiplatelet therapy may be considered for 3 to 12 months. Thank you very much for uh, your attendance. Uh, please subscribe uh, our channel for um, uh, another uh, new lecture and then uh, see you again in the next lecture inshallah a uh, lecture of um, um, spanking aneurysm lecture of uh, mesenteric uh, venous thrombosis and uh, lecture of um, uh, mesenteric dissection thank you very much